It's still a long road ahead in terms of the recovery, but we're cautiously optimistic that we're finally moving beyond the stall speed that we've been stuck in. The, the nuts and bolts of the retail sector is going to come under huge pressure with the technology changes and we should be cautious about it, it that. It looks as if the building blocks um, are in place for recovery to have started. Um, but I, I remain um, sort of cautious because, frankly, the, the broader economy is fragile. Confidence in the property industry is climbing again. The prospects for the residential and office sectors look particularly promising. In a stark contrast to the results of EG and Grosvenor's property sentiment survey this time last year, the latest measure of property industry confidence hit 37 in the second quarter of 2013, up from minus 1.25 a year ago. Estates Gazette brought together three industry experts to discuss the results of this quarter's survey. Well, obviously it's an encouraging number, particularly compared with this time last year, and is broadly in keeping with what we've seen on the economic front. We've had two consecutive quarters of growth now. The Q2 numbers uh, were quite strong. And uh, more broadly, we've seen that uh, growth is now moving beyond just the services sector and, and spreading mm -hmm. out. This Q2 survey found improved confidence in almost all sectors, and particularly residential. I think um, the US is a really good proxy because the US market went into recession 12 months before the UK and probably came out of the, the recession 12 months before as well. So if you're looking now at what's happening in the US, they're seeing price rises of about 10%. Uh, and they're seeing transactions up around about 10%, which I think is, is you know, quite possibly a, a proxy for what we'll see over the next 12, 18 months in the UK. Confidence in the office market shifted up a gear, with 37% of respondents feeling more confident than a year ago. Well, I think, like uh, a lot of people involved in the central London office market, we've been revising our forecasts up. I think what is helpful is that it, even though it's been a period of weak demand, uh, supply has been relatively contained as well. So if we are now emerging, albeit slowly, from a difficult period of growth, we're starting at a point where we don't have any major overhang from the previous um, recession. So that has meant that uh, the growth we've started to see has translated quicker than we would have expected into an uplift in rents. In contrast with other sectors, retail was the most subdued. New technology twinned with the economic downturn has meant the pressure on retailers with physical shops is increasing. You can bet that by 2020, something like approaching half of all non-food products will be purchased online. So that's going to have some significant impact on the retail sector in terms of its uh, fixed costs. Bill Grimsey goes on to say he believes there is a link between the problems facing UK town centres and a housing undersupply. We have uh, whichever surveys you want to take, somewhere between 30,000 and 40,000 empty shop units in this country today. And fundamentally we have too much retail space anyway and we come back to that I'm sure later. And I just think that town centres need to get more populations inside them and so we need a joined up thinking to take this forward and to try and see how you can use those assets as affordable housing to ease the situation whilst you're also encouraging builders to build new homes. And, and, and I don't see any sign of that being joined up and I think that's an important point. This is Emily Wright for Estates Gazette.